Hi folks, at the Maui conference uh, I showed a few people my version of an explanation of meningeal adhesions and releases to patients uh, to a couple of the chiropractors there and they found it was fairly useful so I thought I'd make it available to everyone. I do this on a whiteboard in my adjusting room. Uh, it only takes a few minutes but it seems to uh, serve the patient's curiosity enough that they settle into the idea of having the meningeal releases done pretty quickly. Okay, the spill goes something like this. Alright, today we're going to do a crash course in spinal anatomy. What I'm drawing here is where we have the bony canal of the spine formed by the individual vertebrae. And then on top of that we have perched the skull and down the bottom is the tailbone. Inside of that of course we have the brain continuing down as the spinal cord. It occupies about 80% at least of the canal and will tend to hug the curves on its way up and down the canal there. The brain and spinal cord are wrapped in a thick glad wrap layer called the meninges. You've heard of meningitis, well this is the stuff that's affected. Now the meninges basically anchor the brain and spinal cord in a couple of key areas. One's inside the skull and that extends down into the upper couple of vertebral segments and then down the base of the spinal cord as well, anchoring it down there. The cord's otherwise reasonably free to slide and move as it needs to. Now as I said the spine's made up of individual vertebrae so it's segmented uh, like so and when we bend our chin down to our chest because of the segmentation the canal lengthens because the bones fan out from each other and it can lengthen by up to about six to eight centimeters depending on which author you read. Now this is all well and good provided that the spinal cord is free to slide up and down that bony tube. What was found however back in the 1950s by a neurosurgeon by the name of Alf Breg was that we developed these adhesions between the meninges covering the spinal cord and the inside of the bony tube. The effect of these ultimately is to restrict the movement of the spinal cord within the canal and also obviously bind it to any shape that it's causing the spine to take. Now his solution for these adhesions was to be able to go in doing what we call a laminectomy, opening up the back of the spine and cutting these adhesions more or less with a scalpel. Now it was an effective way to do it, however it's not a day-to-day -day solution for the problem. So another way had to be developed in order to get rid of these adhesions. So if we refer back to the anchor points I talked about here, point A at the base of the skull and top of the spinal column, and down here around the tailbone where the bottom of the cord's anchored there. If we come over to this diagram, now I can't do spurgery on you every day, so what I need to be able to do is to tease these adhesions free from the spinal cord. And the way we do that is, if you imagine point A here that we talked about up this point, and point B down here at the base of the uh, spinal cord here, what I need to do is get point A and point B as far from each other as I possibly can. This has the effect of putting these under a lot of tension, and then we go one step further to actually start to tease the adhesions free. So when I fold your spine like so, what I'm doing is creating tension on the adhesions but still well within the elastic limits of the other structures here. And then I go a step further. When I do this, this is when I can tease these adhesions free. I do this with a reasonable amount of force. It's not painful, but it is what's required to free these adhesions up. Now there's three versions of the meningeal releases we call them. You won't necessarily get all of them on any given visit, uh, but usually at least one of them. And they're over and done with in the first minute or two of the, the visit anyway, so it's all pretty quick. 
when we start doing the meningeal releases I'll begin at about 50% of the pressure we need to actually start to tease them free and we'll build up to about 100% over about three to four visits. Most people take to it pretty well by then so you shouldn't have any troubles after that. Alright, any questions at all? Okay folks, that pretty well sums up what I normally explain for patients uh, regarding meningeal adhesions. The anteriors I tend to cover more uh, with using my hands as a demonstration, uh, so it doesn't quite work so well on the whiteboard, but hopefully you might find this useful. See ya.